Hi. Hey, what's going on you guys? So for this week's video, I decided to try and get just a little bit sciency and uh, try out an experiment I found online to make a foam fountain. I've actually done this experiment before in high school when I took chemistry, but I was using like the really dangerous chemicals that uh, I cannot get my hands on. So I'm settling for the less climactic version, which uses safe ingredients that you can find in your house. In your house? In, in your house in your house. But I didn't stop there. I thought since galaxy stuff is kind of popular right now, like galaxy themed stuff, I thought I would try making this a galaxy foam fountain. So we'll see how that works out. You're going to need a few ingredients to try this at home. You're going to need a bottle or bottles. I decided to do three bottles to try three different galaxy colors. You're going to need some dish soap. You're also going to need some hydrogen peroxide. And I read online that the higher, this is just 3% hydrogen peroxide, which you can find at like any drugstore pretty much. but. I read that if you can find like 6% or higher, it makes the like explosion a lot bigger or like the toothpaste a lot more climactic. And I know you can find 6% at a hair salon, that's what it said everyone online is you can find it in hair salons, but 3% will still work, it just won't be as exciting. But I thought since most of the online like recipes to do this said to use like big soda bottles, I thought maybe by using little tiny bottles that maybe <laughs> the explosion might be like more concentrated and bigger even with 3%. So we'll test out that theory in a minute. You're also going to need some yeast. Also some food coloring, which is optional if you don't want to do the galaxy one, but if you do then yes you will need food coloring. And you'll need some bowls, a measuring cup, and like other bowls and a spoon to mix everything together. And that's pretty much it, not that many ingredients. Oh, I almost forgot, you also need a bowl of hot water, like not like boiling hot or like lukewarm, like hot-ish water. <laughs> For the yeast so make sure you have that. So first thing I'm gonna do, the online instructions say you need one tablespoon of yeast so since I have three I'm gonna measure out three tablespoons, one per each. Am I the only one that when I read like re baking recipes or any other recipes that call for yeast like the first thing that pops into my head is yeast infection? No? No one else? I'm the only one? Okay. Don't you love when stuff says to easy tear away and then it doesn't tear away at all? That's a whole other video topic. Actually, this kind of reminds me of when I was in high school and I took grade 11 biology. One of our projects was our teacher gave us like petri dishes with agar in them. And our assignment was to like go around the school and swab different surfaces and like smear it onto the petri dish with the agar and like to grow our own cultures. And one person in my class swabbed the door handle and found yeast on it which was absolutely disgusting. But I remember our teacher was like so excited. She was like, oh my God, you guys found yeast, ah! And she was like talking about how beautiful it looked and we were all just like, okay. So yeah, that's fun. Be careful when you touch door handles in public people. There just might be yeast on it. All right, so I just filled the bowls with yeast. I need to put three tablespoons of warm water in there. So I'm just gonna do that now. So there's one. Ew, the smell this gives off is kind of not that great. And you just gotta stir it in a little bit to get rid of all the clumps. Okay, one thing they didn't tell you in the instructions online is that the yeast will sometimes accumulate on your spoon into this like nasty sludge that doesn't come off. So uh, you might want to carry a few other utensils with you just to like, <laughs> you know, get it off the spoon. It kind of looks like peanut butter, which is kind of gross because I just had peanut butter today. So, mmm. Okay, so it might be better to put the yeast in after you put the water in, because I think if you put the yeast in first and pour the water on top, it turns into this nasty, sludgy, peanut butter-like mixture, so... And it's kind of a pain in the ass to uh, dissolve after that, so... Um, you might want to try that. Okay, well that took forever, so I'm just gonna set the yeast aside to let it finish doing its yeast thing, so while it's doing that, I'm gonna fill up these bottles, says we need half a cup of hydrogen peroxide per bottle. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Okay, so I have half a cup of hydrogen peroxide in each of these bottles and it says now we need to put a little bit of dish soap, like a little squirt into each one. I think the bubbles are just give like the foam some substance when it decides to come out. So you just gotta swish it around just to get it all nice and mixed up. I feel like such a chemist right now. Okay, I almost put these all in here and got the like reaction started and I almost forgot a crucial step which is the freaking food coloring. I'm trying to make this galaxy. So I think I'm gonna put just straight up blue into one of these. I'm gonna put a lot of drops in because I want this to be good. Ooh, just like magic. I'm gonna do a light purple which is two blue and two red. I'm gonna probably triple it so I'm gonna put six blue and six red. Yeah, two, three, four, five, six. Two, three, four, five, six. Give that one a little swish. 
Oh, it's kind of like a dark purple, fancy. Okay, now I'm gonna do a darker purple, which is four blue and one red, so I'm gonna triple that as well. So that's 12 blue and three red. Give that a little swish. And we got some more purple goodness. All right, so now that we got our food coloring in there, the hydrogen peroxide in there, the soap in there, the yeast to mix up, we're pretty much ready to go ahead and drop all of these in. Okay, I don't know how fast this is gonna go. I'm kind of nervous, cause like, okay, let's just go. The moment of truth, here we go. Ooh. Oh my God, it's going, it's going, it's going, it's going. Okay, uh. Oh my God, there we go. <gasps> and the last one. Okay, okay. Whoa, it's going. Okay, this one is not purple at all. This is like blue. This is purple. This is like a light blue. Oh, this is so cool. Ladies and gentlemen, just call me a scientist. The science guy. Oh my God, I love this. This is like, it's still going too. I'm so glad I chose a smaller bottle. Okay, it's starting to look a lot more like Neapolitan ice cream than it is Galaxy right now, but maybe if I like move it around a little bit, it might make like some cool Galaxy colors. I don't know. I don't know, right now it just looks like really delicious ice cream that I really want to eat right now. Okay, so the reaction is pretty much stopped on all three of these. This one's still just barely going, but I'm gonna give you guys just a little look on my iPhone at the overhead. So this is basically the situation. This is, I was hoping for them to be like darker, so maybe if you add like more blues to it, it might be darker. But I mean, it's kind of galaxy. Like we got the purple and the blue, and if I mix it all together, maybe it'll make this nice little galaxy swirl thing. I'm also thinking maybe if I added like glitter to this, I never thought about putting glitter in it, but if we had like silver shimmery glitter to put in here, that might make it look extra cool and galaxy-like. But galaxy or not, I think this is freaking awesome. Like this is so cool. Like you can do this with stuff at your home, like a foam fountain, like come on. Okay, so that was so much fun that I decided to do one last uh, little attempt. Instead of mixing three separate colors, I've decided to try mixing like all the different galaxy colors I used into one without like mixing them together. So maybe when the reaction happens, they'll all like converge into one cool like galaxy swirl. So I just mixed up different colors in these. So I'm just gonna drop them in. That'd be so cool if this works out. Try to get as much color out as I can. Okay, now I'll put the water in here first. I'm gonna try putting the yeast in after. So maybe that makes a difference, I don't know. By far, mixing the yeast is the most annoying part. It smells bad, it takes a while, the yeast gets kind of annoying because it clumps up and gets all gross. <sighs> but it's worth it. Okay, so I've got it all mixed in, and once again, I'm gonna film this on my phone just to get you guys a little close-up, see if it works. I hope it still works because I just noticed that the water I mixed the yeast in isn't warm anymore. It's just kind of room temperature, so Hopefully we still get a good reaction, so let's put this in and find out. All right, here we go. It's all come down to this moment. We got the yeast, we got the ball already. This is when I become a scientist. Three, two, one. All right, here we go. Woo, it's still going, awesome. Okay, well, definitely not mixing all together into a nice galaxy swirl, but that still looks really cool. Yeah, all like the purple and stuff just came out immediately and all like the blue that I put in before just went to the bottom and is now coming out. Okay, this is definitely going to overflow. Definitely going to overflow. Okay, let's make some room quickly. <laughs> oh my god, whew. Okay, now this is cool. I should have let it run a little bit. Now it's coming out as like almost like a soft swirl ice cream. Like we got like a couple of colors there. It didn't become the cool galaxy swirl I wanted, but it's still kind of cool, like that looks kind of neat right there. Well, that's pretty much it. So now that you've seen that I pretty much failed at making a galaxy concoction, but also succeeded in some capacity, please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment down below, I love reading your comments. Also be sure to share this video if you enjoyed it and if you think other people might enjoy it. And if you share it on Twitter or Instagram, please tag me on Twitter at markmarshall94 and at Instagram at markm6247, I believe is what it is, so that I can see the concoction you guys made and double tap and like and follow you back and do all that fun stuff. As as always, you can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat. All the links for that are down below and at the end of this video. And this is still going. And hey, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already because I post new videos every Tuesday. The subscribe button is right down below and at the end of this video. And I'm gonna keep saying it until I get there. Once I get to 1,000 subscribers, I will, I will, remember I made a tongue-tied video not too long ago? 
Here's an example. Because once I get to 1,000 subscribers, I will definitely be doing a giveaway. So be sure to subscribe and share with your friends and have them subscribe so we can get the numbers growing on this channel and get closer to that giveaway. Anyways, that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this week's video and I'll see you guys next week for another brand new video. Bye! So how's that tan coming along? Ha uh ha, -huh, very funny. I'll take some of your sunscreen now if you don't mind. Ha uh, Not so fast. We don't need this anymore.